This is considered the industry's best. NASA opts for Bezos's Blue Origin and Elon Musk SpaceX to build the new lunar landers. Lilia Dergacheva reports, fast-track approach applied to the earlier announced Lunar Gateway project Artemis. The U.S. is seeking to complete its Trump-lauded landing on the moon by 2024, four years ahead of schedule. NASA named three companies that will lead the development of lunar landers for this forthcoming moon program. They are Blue Origin, owned by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, SpaceX, and finally, Alabama-based Dianetics. The lunar landers for which the companies struck contracts worth $579 million, $135 million, and $253 million, respectively, will carry the astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. These are three companies that we believe have a lot of capability that are going to enable us to get to the moon. This is what NASA's administrator Jim Bridenstine said at a press conference as the companies embarked on a tough competition to see who can ultimately deliver the best lander project. Bridenstine told the press conference that he'd received broad bipartisan support for the lunar effect effort, uh, but Congress has not yet earmarked sums for NASA, which will have to go up by $3 billion next year, given the lunar lander projects and NASA's 2020 budget is $22.6 billion. At least one other company, Boeing, is known to have submitted a proposal but failed to be selected, with NASA not commenting on their decision about the giant Boeing. The selected companies have come up with varying proposals, while Blue Origin suggests building a three-stage lander that would leave its landing engines on the surface of the moon to lighten the load when the time comes to return to Earth. SpaceX wants to build the new model based on its Universal Starship spacecraft, which it says could also be used for the Mars missions, and Dynetics ambitiously plans to have a lander that will be launched by, uh, on a rocket with Doug uh, Lovero, Associate Administrator of NASA's Human Exploration and Operation Missions Directorates, referring to all three as the best of the inter industry's ideas. Lovero said this is really the last piece of the puzzle to go ahead and get us back to the moon, We've got all the other pieces in the work already, and this is the last big piece. We're ready to move forward on this. Right now, the NASA program known as Artemis, named after Apollo's twin sister and the goddess of the moon in Greek mythology, following America's successful Apollo missions of the 60s and 70s. This one aims to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024, four years ahead of the U.S. plans uh, earlier approved by President Trump. The original plan stipulated the construction of a lunar space station called Gateway, which was projected to be built in cooperation with Russia, with talks scheduled earlier for spring this year. It was suggested that the international astronauts would dock at Gateway first before transferring to a lander and taxiing to the surface. Washington's fast track approach is planned to evolve into the lunar program of 2028 that will involve international partners such as European Space Agency and Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency. And speaking about this new challenge, lunar effort, challenging effort, John Bridenstine earlier said, this time when we go to the moon, we're going to stay. This is what he promised. The program launched around the time U.S. President Donald Trump ordered the U.S. Department of Defense to create the U.S. Space Force, the sixth branch of the U.S. Armed Forces in December of 2018. This is on Sputnik News. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube 
channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.